contestant number four. And he is Alexander Thiel from Mechanical Engineering. And he's going to tell us about phase change materials for energy efficient buildings. Okay. Good evening. The California Energy Commission has established ambitious goals that all new residential construction should be zero net energy by the year 2020 and all new commercial construction by the year 2030. Now what is zero net energy? This represents a balance between the value generated and consumed by a building measured in economic or physical terms. Value might be generated by solar panels or windmills. It might be consumed by turning on the lights, plugging in an appliance or heating and cooling the building. The goal of our research is to reduce the energy required to heat and cool the building by reducing the amount of heat that enters the building during the daytime and leaves the building again at nighttime. This is accomplished by adding phase change materials to the building walls. So we're going to talk about a phase change material that everybody here is familiar with, water. Consider a glass of water sitting at room temperature. Now imagine that we can cool this water down to where it's at its freezing temperature but still liquid. This involves a certain amount of energy. Now if we were to continue freezing the water so that it turns from liquid to solid or changes phase, this involves about four times the amount of energy than simply cooling down the water. What's more, that happens at a nearly constant temperature. It's this large energy storage at constant temperature that we want to leverage in buildings. So returning to our building from earlier, let's add phase change materials to the building walls, something that melts and freezes near room temperature, like paraffin wax. In this case, when heat hits the building during the daytime, instead of coming straight through the wall, it's stored as the phase change material melts. In the evening, the material solidifies and releases that heat back into the house. As a result, less energy is required to heat and cool the building on a daily basis. Now this energy storage, the amount of energy savings that we get depends on a variety of factors, including the type and amount of PCM used, and also the location of the building. The state of California can be divided into 16 zones, each with their own unique climate. My research has shown that the annual energy savings associated with adding phase change materials to building walls tends to be larger in moderate climates like Los Angeles than in colder climates like San Francisco or hotter climates like Fresno. I predicted these values using computer simulations that took several hours to run. The cool part is I've now come up with an algorithm that can perform these calculations in just a matter of seconds. This has already been implemented into building simulation software designed here at UCLA. The speed and simplicity of that software could allow it to be developed for use on tablets or smartphones. The users might have questions, such as how much energy might be required to heat and cool my building? How much might that be reduced if I add phase change materials to the walls? How much money might I save on my electricity bill as a result? The answers to those questions and many more could be at your fingertips in the near future. The vision here is that building designers and homeowners will be able to consider the benefits of phase change materials when they're dreaming up the zero net energy buildings of California's future. Thank you. <laughs> 